the study. The sample size was 30. Random allocation was made into four study groups and one control group. And finally, we estimated the plaque levels using the Tursley modification of Quigley Hain plaque index. And we estimated the plaque levels prior to the study and then after the completion of the study. Inclusion criteria included uh, patients within the age of 18 to 50 years and having complete condition to the second molars in all the four quadrants. Any teeth uh, that was having any signs of uh, caries, periodontal involvement, or uh, subjects having any systemic disease or using medications were dropped out, or people undergoing orthodontic treatment or very prosthetic or orthodontic appliances were also dropped out. Okay. Our instructions were to brush the teeth once a day for one minute with fluoride based toothpaste that was provided along. To use mouthwash uh, 5 ml diluted with 10 ml water two times a day for 30 seconds. While the control group uh, did not use any fluoride paste nor any mouthwash, they only rinsed their mouth with water. And for statistical analysis, one way in over test and bond for only test for multiple comparisons were made. These were our uh, treatment regimes that we uh, instructed our patients. Group 1 used 0.2% chlorhexidine gluconate. Group 2 used 0.05% uh, sodium monofluorophosphate. Group 3 used chlorhexidine and sodium fluoride in combination. Group 4 was using cetylpyridinium fluoride in combination with sodium fluoride. And finally, our control group was only using water. The results indicated that group 4 had maximum plus inhibition. The p-value is 0 0.023, uh, followed by group 1. And the least plus inhibition was made for group 2, 0.27, and the p-value was not statistically significant. Uh, however, group 3 and control group caused increase in plaque formation. Compared to the control groups, all of the four study groups had decreased levels of plaque. The only statistical significant difference uh, compared to the control group existed in the chlorhexidine group and in the cetylpyridinium chloride along with fluoride group. The combination of chlorhexidine with fluoride did not decrease any plaque levels, rather the association uh, was increased the plaque levels. That's how we show the plug and hip three uh, action, maximum is for group four, followed by group one, group two, group three, and the control group water had maximum plug. Okay, in conclusion, ability for hexidine and fluoride, sorry, cetylpyridine and fluoride and fluoride, uh, we found that increasing fluoride concentration did not increase the anti activity. And synergistic effect that was noted for chlorhexidine and fluoride was not observed in our study, possibly because we were evaluating mouthwash while many of the studies evolved, um, evaluated varnishes. It has been suggested that varnishes have more penetration, longer duration of contact, due to which possibly their results could have differed with our study. Our next research challenges should uh, include um, the development of mouthwashes having few or ideal known side effects. The prominent side effects for chlorhexidine are staining of the dental restoration, teeth, tongue, taste alteration, increase in supragendival calculus after two weeks of continuous use. On molecular level, it has been found that it's cytotoxic to odontoblast, fibroblast, and osteoblast. Sodium chloride also is cytotoxic to fibroblast, or mucosal cells, and odontoblast. Cetylpyridinium chloride causes tooth staining. And ideally, there should be mouthwashes that can be used in association with toothpaste so that patient does not have to wait 30 minutes between using uh, toothpaste and the mouthwash. Limitations for our uh, current study, small sample size because uh, very few patients were willing to undergo uh, this regime of dropping or minimizing their tooth brushing. Inability to eliminate tooth brushing because it was unethical, we couldn't uh, extend the time period beyond five days, otherwise clinical gingivitis would have developed. There is a definite possibility of lack of compliance and non-uniformity between diets. And uh, what we suggest for the next um, experiments in this sort are, alternatively, there should be experiments using antimicrobial isolates on the teeth of lab animals, as well as assessing the microbial colonies by uh, using anti agents. In conclusion, the anti effect maximum was observed for cetylpyridinium chloride plus fluoride, followed by chlorhexidine association, and then finally by sodium monofluorophosphate. Chlorhexidine and sodium fluoride combination did not reduce plaque levels, rather it increased plaque levels. And finally, increasing fluoride concentration did not improve any anti-plaque effects. This means that a patient at a high risk of KD should not only be advised to use fluoride, but should also be given anti-plaque um, agents other than fluoride. We would like to uh, give courteous thanks to our teachers, Dr. Nahid Majmi from Labour College of Medicine and Dentistry, Dr. Asir Hussain, Dr. Nadeem Chand, all the participants of the study and all the people who facilitated this study without their help and support, uh, this couldn't have been achieved. These are a few of the references used.
And finally, thank you for all of your patience and cooperation.